So in an earlier video, we noted that Raoult's law only talks about how the quantities or concentrations of the volatile components in the solution are going to affect their uh, partial vapor pressures, but it doesn't actually say anything about the type of you know components involved and uh, the type of liquids that are mixing with each other or how they interact with one another and how those interactions are going to impact the partial vapor pressure. So it doesn't say, doesn't take into account all those factors that are you know most definitely going to uh, affect the the vapor pressure so so most real solutions in our day-to-day -day lives are, are not going to precisely or exactly follow Raoult's law so they're definitely going to be deviations from this law but if you take a hypothetical scenario where you know if there if at all there exist solutions that follow Raoult's law precisely across the entire range of uh, concentrations then those solutions are called ideal solutions. Just like most real gases as we know do not follow the ideal gas law precisely, most real solutions are not ideal solutions. So then they are what we call non-ideal solutions. Most real solutions are what we call non-ideal solutions. So in case of ideal solutions, we've already plotted the, the graph between partial pressure and the mole fractions. But let's say you have a binary solution with two liquids, A and B. So this is vapor pressure. And this is mole fraction. So let's say this is um, XA equals one and this is x b equals one here x b is zero and x a is zero here so let's say the the partial vapor pressure according to the raoult's law here goes like that so this in this case will be pv naught and in this case will be PA naught. So this is how PA will vary and this is how PB will vary with mole fraction. The line joining PA naught and PB naught is the line that denotes P total, the total pressure above the solution surface coming from the uh, vapor pressures, partial vapor pressures of the volatile components. Is, so we already know this from our earlier videos. So besides the fact that these ideal solutions follow Raoult's law closely, uh, actually exactly, they, they, they also exhibit two other properties, two important properties. And what they are is basically delta V mix, meaning the change in volume when you mix these two liquids to form a solution is equal to zero and enthalpy of mixing is also equal to zero. Let's think about this a little more here. So delta V mix, what, the, all this, what this means is if you had let's say liquid A and liquid B, let me mark this with a different color. So let's say this is B this is A. Let's say they each of these is one liter in volume. So when you actually add these two together, you get two liters of the solution. So somewhere here. So this is A plus B. So this is two liters. So there is no change in volume when you mix these and, and you might ask what is the big deal about it? You have one liter of liquid A and one liter of liquid B and when you mix it, it becomes two liters and why is that a big deal? But you'll notice that this does not happen with all solutions. This is only in true when it is the case of ideal solutions. In all the real solutions, there will be a slight difference and you can try this out at your home. 
you can actually take two different liquids and mix them together and precisely measure their volumes before mixing and after mixing and you'll see a, either a positive or a negative change in volume depending on you know what sort of interactions these liquids have with each other so this this topic of interactions becomes you know the inter intermolecular forces becomes more apparent when you measure the delta h mixing and we've talked about delta h mixing before the process of forming the solution being overall endothermic or exothermic so 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 in this same similarly in this case if you had let's say a and b you have interactions between a a and you have interactions between B, B, meaning within this liquid A, you have uh, uh, this certain type of intermolecular forces and same this is the case with liquid B. And when you mix, you have a third form of interaction, which is A, B. So depending on, you know, whether these molecules, let's say, for example, you had two polar liquids, I mean, both A and B are polar. So they are going to have strong interactions when they are mixed together. So so in case of ideal solutions, what we are trying to say here is basically the AB inter intermolecular interactions are, are very similar or exactly the same as AA and BB. So, so that the, there is no difference when you actually mix these two types of molecules together. The molecule A doesn't care if it is surrounded by A's or it's surrounded by B's. Or, and similarly, molecule B doesn't care if it is surrounded by only B's or it's surrounded by A's. So, and because all kinds of interactions are assumed to be exactly the same. So in those cases, the overall delta H mixing, the enthalpy of mixing is equal to zero. So there's no heat released or heat absorbed in when this solution is formed. So, so that is the case of ideal solutions. And, and I've already said that most real solutions are not ideal. And we know that they could be near ideal solutions. And we'll talk about more uh, examples in the, in the next video. And we'll also talk about um, how non-ideal solutions behave in a little more detail.